Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to my review for 22 Jump Street, which of course is the sequel to the 21 Jump Street reboot that came out in 2011, or 12, no, it was 2012, called 21 Jump Street, uh, which of course the movies are comedies where the original television show was a drama featuring Johnny Depp, uh, and of course the new movie star Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. A little bit different uh, tonally, you know, comedies, dramas, not really the same thing, but uh, you know what? I thought the 21 Jump Street reboot completely worked. I wasn't a huge fan of the original. I watched a few episodes when I was a kid, only because I was just like, oh, drama. Ooh, I'm a kid. I like school drama. I need to watch it. And I didn't really, I didn't care for it. But uh, 21 Jump Street, the reboot, the, the movie I thought was hilarious. I thought Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill were both fantastic uh, together, which is very surprising. The two polar opposites of actors, in my opinion. But, uh... I was really, really, really looking forward to seeing this film. It's directed by the same guys. Of course, the guys that did the Lego movie, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and of course, 21 Jump Street. I could not wait. So what did I think of 22 Jump Street? Let's talk about it. The story for 22 Jump Street, I'm not going to lie, is pretty much exactly the same as 21 Jump Street. You have, of course, Jenko and Schmidt, played by Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill, respectively. But... There's a difference. In the beginning, they're actually doing undercover work, right? regular cop undercover work, but they completely fail at doing that. So, of course, they get sent back to 21 Jump Street, or actually 22 Jump Street, because the Koreans bought back the church, and now they have to move across the street where a Vietnamese church is, so they have to take that as... Uh, their base of operations. So 22 Jump Street, uh, they would go back and of course they have to go undercover in a college, find the drug, find the source, who's dealing, blah blah blah. You know exactly what's going to happen in this film. You know what's going to happen at the end. You know there's going to be a part where Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill don't like each other again and then later they're going to get back together and you know just bro it out. But the thing is, is that this movie does it very clever. Unlike Hangover 2 where it was pretty much exactly the same thing. I mean pretty much sometimes shot for shot the same thing. This movie does not do that, but when it does, it's actually hilarious. Whenever something happens that is exactly the same, they actually mix it in with the plot and make it actually really, really funny and very clever, which I really enjoyed. If you see the film and you saw the original and still remember a lot of key moments from the original, then you might know what I'm talking about, but there's actually a few very well done gags that pretty much make fun of movies like this, uh, where of course the sequel comes out and it's exactly the same thing. They actually make fun of that, which I thought was really, really well done. Uh, the story itself is still a lot of fun, especially Channing Tatum and uh, Jonah Hill. Both of them are hilarious in this, and I'm really glad to, <laughs> to see Channing Tatum do stuff like this still. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's been doing stuff like this for a couple years where you actually like him in the film, but I'm really, really glad that Channing Tatum has become this actor because like three or four years ago, I would have told you straight up, I think Channing Tatum's like one of the worst actors ever. But now, I mean, he's, he's owning it. I mean, I think he's great in a lot of films, and I thought he was really funny in this. There's one scene that made me laugh so hard just because of his reaction. And most likely, you know what uh, moment I'm talking about. It's a long minute of him yelling about something. You know what I'm talking about. It's it's hilarious. Uh, and Jonah Hill is great, as usual. I mean, he's a he's an Oscar-nominated actor. Um, so... You know, he's good. Of course, the rest of the cast does great in this, but the standout for the supporting cast, of course, has to be Ice Cube. I thought he was, ooh, he was so funny in the first one, but he had a kind of small part. This one, oh, he has a bigger part, and every scene he's in, he makes me laugh, at, at laugh my ass off at least once. There is one scene where he has to react to something, just like Channing Tatum, and it, ooh, let me just say, there's something to do with string beans in this film that is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. Just... His reaction, and it has to do with string beans. It's, it's, <laughs> I, or, or peas, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it, it was really funny. And the supporting cast is great. You have Peter Stormare, who I really love, who is a, a new addition to the cast. You have a few other ones. You have, like, a couple cameos from Pat Oswalt and a few other co comedians that you uh, will definitely recognize in this film. Um, I really, really enjoyed the supporting cast, but I, I really love the bromance between the main two and, of course, Ice Cube. There's so many hilarious moments in this. It never is boring, even though I think this movie's a little bit longer than the original, but it, it flew by so quick. There's so many just great, fun moments. Uh, there's a couple moments where they repeat the same gags in the first film, like this whole drug trip uh, moment in this just like the first one, but even moments like that, I actually think the drug moment in this film surpassed the other one. I thought it was so fun. I couldn't stop laughing. This movie is just 
probably the funniest comedy I've seen this year. It really is. I mean, I love Neighbors. I love you know a few others. I, I can't remember. But I thought this was beyond funny. I really, really love this film. I can't think of any complaints besides maybe... Uh, there's one character I really liked in the original that does not show back up, which is, uh, the love interest for Jonah Hill. I thought she was really good in the original, and she does not come back. I think she played by Brie Larson, I think? I don't, I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, she was really good, and she didn't come back. That's, like, the only negative I can think of. Uh, I thought the new female love interest for Jonah Hill wasn't that interesting, too. Uh, even though it has a <laughs> there's a really funny gag, uh, related to her. But, uh... I really, really, really love this film. I think it's a little bit better than the first one, and I can't wait to go see it again. I'm going to give it a 37 out of a 40. I thought it was terrific, really funny, uh, and one of the most entertaining times I've had in the theater. Even though I'm not going to give it a complete 40, of course. Uh, it's still one of the best films of this year. Definitely go check it out. 22 Jump Street. There you go. There's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and goodbye.